So a lot of people always ask whether um, their son or daughter should take A-level or IB. And I think here at FETIS, when we initially launched the IB, um, we thought it would be the preserve of our most academic pupils, that they would be the only ones able to access the course. But the reality is that as the IB has become an embedded part of our sixth form curriculum, we have recognised and acknowledged that it's accessible to all pupils. And in actual fact, sometimes those pupils who perhaps haven't even fared quite as well at GCSE are really well suited to the IB because in carrying on with six, uh, six subjects, it really structures their learning and structures their academic day in a way that perhaps um, A-level doesn't. Added to this, um, I think a lot of our pupils are drawn to um, the IB because we do very well in it and our average point score is something like 39 out of 45 points. Um, which you know, puts us well in amongst the best IB schools in the country. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the IB at FETIS, then just go on to our website at www.fetis.com. So what attracted me about the IB was the breadth of the curriculum and the variety of subjects that I can take, so I wasn't limited to just choosing three. Um, and also the international, how international the curriculum is, especially in subjects like English and history. I really like the broadness in subjects um, because it gives you a lot to be kind of focusing on. Um, and also I really like the variety um, and being able to do lots of different things. Uh, also, I kind of like the full onness of it um, as opposed to A-level because you're always busy and you're always doing something. Um, and it just kind of keeps you quite on your feet. So some of the main challenges while studying the IB, I think, are the deadlines that you have to meet. There's a lot of work that comes with the IB, which I wasn't used to from GCSE. However, through working with wonderful teachers, I've learned to manage my time and organize myself really well. And I also find the critical thinking um, that the IB kind of forces you to to encounter, I think you're made to think for yourself a lot more, and that's a difficulty that I, that I struck. However, I think I've learned to go through it and build on my own knowledge. Thinking about university, um, as I said, IB um, kind of prepares you um, with the amount of work you're getting. Um, you get a lot of kind of quite longer uh, essays, things like that. Um, and IAs, for example, which will definitely prepare you for later on, for example at university um, and then later on in life. One of the main aspects from why I chose the IB was how well it prepares you for university. And I think speaking to many of my friends who did go to university following the IB, um, they said they felt a lot more prepared than those who didn't. And I think I was really nervous about um, doing well at university and being able to manage the workload there, but I found out the, that the IB actually prepares you for that really well, especially with aspects like um, the EE and TOK and CAS, which make you a very well-rounded student. If I could change something about the IB, it would probably be the CAS curriculum. I think that it's quite stressful on top of all the work that you already have, and um, especially the cast reflections, I feel like are quite time consuming. Um, however, I wouldn't change how challenging the IB is. I think whilst we may complain about it a lot, it's why I chose it and it's why I love the IB. Any advice I'd have for someone beginning the IB is, the IB is a great qualification. Um, it's very diverse, of course, in subject choice. And also there's brilliant other things to it, such as CAS um, and the EE, which may not sound that appealing, but actually it's really good and hones in your research skills and ability to write uh, a big essay by yourself.